Well, Harley and Josh of New Constellations, thank you so much for being on my Mod Rock Jam podcast. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. And you're from Portland, Oregon. I went to Oregon a few summers ago. Nice. Did you like it? So I stayed, air quote, in Portland, but I really didn't like visit. I, I'm i a huge river phoenix nerd so i i had to do an organ trip i had to go to brownsville i had to see where they filmed stand by me and then i went to astoria so my hotel was just in portland but it was mostly like out and about but nice. i mean what are what are some places i could i should check out in portland the next time i revisit you hit astoria that's a place i always tell people to go we always go falls is cool which is a lake like an hour and a half and Mount Hood is like right in the background so like mirrors on the lake which is so incredibly beautiful. The Washougal River is amazing. So amazing. Yeah a lot of really cool rocks that you can sit on and they make little pools so even if there's like a lot of people there you can all have your own little section of the river it's really awesome. Oh, nice. Okay, so I have a friend that's really into nature, so me and him will probably make a road trip out of that. I saw on your socials, it says friends following their dreams. I know that your dreams have been coming true, releasing music that's been gaining millions of streams, playing live to an audience, you know, uh, selling out hometown shows. What else, what else is New Constellations dreaming? Um, I think something that's really cool that we have been doing just sort of naturally, but that I would love to lean into more is like that we have so many friends that are all so talented in like so many different ways. And it's cool that like whatever success we're sort of finding in our band, we're able to like bring our friends up with us to like do these fun things. Like we get into situations where it's like, we're making a music video and we need someone to do set design. And like, we have a friend that has like a passion for set design. And now it's like, cool. Now you get to like design a set in a music video. Or like we have friends that are like photographers and it's like, cool. Now you get to like do all this photography stuff and get it published. And just like little things, like a friend that's a designer and it's like, you know, he's making merch for us. And it's just really cool to like tangentially sort of like, bring your friends up as well and i think that's like a dream of ours that we really love is is to like find the success and like bring everybody along with us and like give them opportunities like you know you might not get an opportunity to to direct a music video but then you direct a couple of our music videos because we're friends and now you have a portfolio and now you have a resume and now you're doing it on your own you know, and I just think all of that kind of thing is just so awesome and so cool. And just to be able to like, sort of collaborate and like share, you know, whatever small amount of success we have now or what we might have in the future, but to just like, bring everybody up as a community and kind of have our band. I have this sort of dream that our band is becomes more of like an art collective than like just a band, you know. And I think that that's something that is a dream of mine, at least, to just, like, have this sort of hive of, like, creativity within our friends that are, like, making music, directing music videos, creating merch, designing things. Like, I just think that, that, that that's really, really cool and kind of a dream of mine to just have a sort of an art collective. I feel like that's, like, truly the only way we even got, like, I don't know the success that we did right off the jump was because of all these people, all these artists around us that were like bending over backwards to like use their skills to help us get any kind of like, you know, momentum, which is really freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. I just watched, um, I don't know if you know, Elephant Six, they're like this like record label music collective from the early nineties, like Neutral Milk Hotel and Apples and Stereo and of Montreal. And uh, I just watched the documentary about them last night. And it, that's kind of how they were. It's like, essentially, it was 10 people and 10 different bands. Like, they each had their own band, but then they each were all in each other's bands at the same time. And so it was, like, just super inspiring. And, like, I'm kind of riding that wave still because I just watched that movie last night. But it was just this super awesome, like, inspiring thing where they were saying, like, you know, if you have five friends that all create art, any one of those artists 
have four people in the audience once they're ready to like show something yeah. you know so if you like this art create like collective where one person finishes something then all the other people are there to witness it <clears throat> to like be the audience you know and you're you just take turns being in the audience or being you know the presenter and I just think that's such an amazing kind of beautiful thing mm -hmm. yeah I love that you guys are uplifting each other's talents and like that saying goes teamwork makes the dream work exactly Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me so the band name new constellation you guys came up with it like on halloween or at a dave matthews band concert <laughs> What's you really story? did a lot of research. I really did. I love this. <laughs> we were originally going by Monstera um, before we'd really released any music, but right before we released Hot Blooded, another band that was like very similar to us kind of released some music, also called Monstera. And they were also like, you know, two piece kind of electronic. So we're like, all right, well, we don't want to have to like confuse people or whatever. So we just brainstormed just a hundred band names um and new constellations was one that we really liked we really stuck with um i always really liked the idea of like a band being like new something like we love new radicals is like a band we really love yeah or new order uh, exactly yeah um <clears throat> so and then harley's like really into space so i was like okay like i like new and then like harley loves space so like constellation and um so, you know, we, we were at a Dave Matthews Band concert when we were, like, uh, talking about all the band names and, like, bouncing them off of our friends. And um, that was a really fun weekend for Harley and I. We go to that festival a lot. Um, but it was, like, we had both been, both gone through a breakup, like, right before that. So it was, like, Harley and I were both there single. And we spent a lot of that weekend just, like, crying in the grass, like, lying in the grass, just, like, crying and, like, holding it's each terrible. other's hands. <laughs> And then, like, swinging so far the other way and just being, like, crazy, like, super energetic, like, party animals, too. It was Manic. really fun. <laughs> Manic is a good word. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we just like the idea that, like, you know, constellations are something that have been there forever, you know, since the universe began, essentially. Like, longer than we can even fathom. So the idea that, like, A that there could be like a new constellation when they're like millions of years old is like kind of interesting. And then like also like the constellations are only the constellations to us from our perspective, but like all those stars still exist in that shape or whatever shape. So if you're on Mars or if you're on Jupiter, or if you're on another, in another solar system, those same stars could be in a different shape. And so like, there are going to be new constellations as we like continue to move around the universe. So like when we're on Mars, we're going to notice new constellations when, you know, when we're, so it's like this idea that it's like there, these constellations are old to us from this perspective, but as we start to change our perspective, those things are going to shift as well. Yeah. That's an interesting kind of like that, perspective that cool. because sometimes you look at the sky and yeah, maybe these constellations are not in the same position as they were the night before. And then I took an earth science class many moons ago. And I remember them saying that stars are just a ball of gas. And eventually stars, as they get bigger and bigger, they, in they end up exploding, but they are reborn as new stars. And so I think yeah. like th that must happen the same way for constellations, but they're always Certainly. like coordinated together. Mm -hmm. yeah and like a lot of the stars we see aren't even there anymore you know it takes the light so long to get to earth that like we're seeing stars that might have burned out a million years ago but the light's just getting to us kind of kind of crazy see see harley me and josh were getting like super nerdy <laughs> she's the, she's the one if you want to talk about it. space <laughs> 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 okay i just wanted to make sure that new constellations didn't come from the sixth album from the 90s band toad the wet sprocket <laughs> no but after i started googling it i noticed that there was a, an album from the 90s called that dude you have done your research i know she has that's you're very awesome. impressed that's awesome <laughs> going back to dave matthews band because you to our fan if dave matthews could cover a new constellation song what would it be Oh. Um, maybe uh, don't let your dreams die. That's what I was gonna say. I feel like that that would be like 
I just imagine him yeah. doing the like, meet me out back. Gonna meet me out back. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, Did you see the so movie? Uh, just go with it with Adam Sandler. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then and then Dave Matthews like is in the movie. I think Dave's in a couple Adam Sandler movies. Really? Uh, okay, I got I gotta watch more. There's that like Zohan movie. I think Dave is in that movie too. You That's know that Harley and I are real fans because we just say Dave. <laughs> we're like, oh, I think Dave was in that one. Oh yeah, yeah. Me and him are really good friends. <laughs> so yeah, funny. maybe you guys could tweet him or I'm I'm sorry, X him. We actually need to do something. We, we do do a Dave our, Matthews cover. That's like one of our biggest goals and dreams is to open up for Dave at the Gorge. We yeah. have like a manifestation like list and that's the number one thing on the list. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, like put it to the universe, like the stars will arrange and make things happen. And on exactly. Spotify, I like your description because you mentioned how your long, uh, lifelong sidekicks because you've known each other since teenagers. And I was wondering since Halloween's uh, around the corner, if you were to dress up as an iconic musical duo, who would it be? Oh. Captain and Tennille, but I get to be Tennille. <laughs> oh my god. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Captain and Tennille would be fun. It, or maybe like, um, gosh, what other, uh, Brooks and Dunn. Oh my. <laughs> or like, um, uh, who sings Rich Girl? Well, you mean Hall and Oates? Hall and Oates. Uh, yeah. There we go. That That's would be a one. good one. <laughs> I was going to say Gwen Stefani, but because like that was like one of her big solo singles, like when she broke out from No Doubt. Oh, like, yeah. no, I think you're talking about Hall and Oates. <laughs> yeah. You could be Gwen Stefani and I could be uh, Gavin Rosdale or. <laughs> <laughs> no, the real answer is. Ashley Simpson and that guy that was in Ashley Simpson's Ryan band. Cabrera? Yes! <laughs> deep cut! Deep cut! I, that's so funny. I remember Ryan Cabrera, like, old MTV days. Mm -hmm. yeah, at the, we'll just tell you why. At the very beginning, so Josh was, like, the first person who ever recorded a song that I wrote when I was 14, he was 16. And at that point in time, I was new to, you know, using my voice and so I would sing really quiet and he would be like trying to encourage me to like, you know, give it some umph. And he's like, just sing like, you know, just sing like Ashley Simpson does. Just like, get in there. And it's just so funny that it's like, that's the, that's the musical inspiration. <laughs> well, and I remember watching like Ashley Simpson's show when she had her show and like Ryan Cabrera was like, her like side guy like in the band and even then I remember being like that seems like a fucking cool gig to be like the musician guy on the side like help you write the music while like you know someone's singing and I was like that seems like a cool job and now like that is sort of my gig so I kind of love that it's funny because I'd be like wait you want me to lip sync <laughs> yeah no 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 <laughs> but that did happen <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, for all the youngsters out there, you can look it up. Um, oh my gosh. So I have a friend named Dave, not Dave Matthews, I'm sorry, but he introduced me to you. He sent me Hot Blooded, and I was like, wow, this is such a fantastic song. And I introduced him to Canon, who I know you went on tour with. So we'll talk about that a little bit afterwards. But who were some artists you guys introduced to each other? Hmm. Um, well, Josh, apparently, he's. this is something he tells me. I don't remember it, but I'm a huge Phoebe Bridgers fan. That is, like, my favorite, and apparently Josh is the one that, that told me about her. I am. Well, because when I, we first talked about it, I was like, yeah, Phoebe Bridgers, and Harley didn't know who she was, and I was, like, shocked. I was like, this is so up your alley. Like, the fact that you don't know who she is is great. But this was, like, five years ago, probably. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think it took the first time. I might have told her about it, but I don't think that's how she discovered her, Phoebe Bridges. I probably told her about it, and she's like, yeah, I'll listen to that, and never sure. did. And then, <laughs> exactly. I was um, like, have you heard of this person? 
Who has Harley introduced me to? Sylvanesso. I didn't know who Sylvanesso was. Um, um, also, D- Dave. <laughs> even Dave, though, too. Like, you know, yeah. like... mm-hmm. um, the first time I even heard of Sylvanesso, I had an apartment in Portland and Harley still lived in our hometown. And she and some friends like came up to Portland to see a Sylvanesso concert and like stayed at my apartment. Um, and that was the first time I'd ever heard of them. And I remember we watched the music video to play it right like four or five times that night <laughs> oh yeah introduced me to modest mouse yep that was like you got me a cd for my birthday yeah like your probably 15th birthday i got you moon in antarctica <laughs> uh-huh that's fun so i know that you went on tour with cannons and i saw your tour diaries was there any city that you fell in love or like you know what i could totally see myself moving here Sadly, I feel like we didn't really get a ton of time in any city. I feel like Toronto was actually the one that we spent the most time in. And so I feel like that that's like the one I liked the most because we like actually got to like see some of the culture. Um, The rest of the cities, we like had coffee and lunch and we were at the venue and that was like it. That's kind of the tragedy of touring is like you get to go to all these cool cities, but you don't have time to do anything, you know? like sound check and then check into your hotel and then you know drive to the next city i was pretty impressed with indianapolis the neighborhood the venue is in we got there and i was like this is what indianapolis is like this place is awesome i do agree with that yeah um i thought toronto was amazing too that was kind of that was probably my favorite also Mm -hmm. i mean i was just Uh, kind of shocked by the midwest in general like it was just it was i feel like all of the cities were really and all of the people were really great. Like, I feel like I could get something in my mind about it that it's like, oh, who's going to be there? And it's like, oh, no, all these people that, like, I would totally, like, hang out with, you know? I think it's, like, West Coasters. You get, like, a picture in your head of what, like, the Midwest or, like, the rest of the country is like. Because, I don't know, I think that Oregon is <clears throat> the coolest place. So I'm always just like, well, nothing is going to be as cool as Oregon. Like, Oregon's amazing. <laughs> but then you go to other places and you're like, oh, shit's cool everywhere. Like pe- there are cool people and cool scenes like happening all over the place. Yeah. Okay. It's so deceiving because sometimes I'll go on social media and there's bands who like they feel it looks like they actually do explore the city they're in. But yeah, you're right. It's like, you know, you're on a time crunch because, you know, you have to do sound check and then you have to get ready and like maybe you want to do like some meet and greet with the fans and you know you pray that your gear doesn't get stolen <laughs> depending on the venue you're at I wish you guys came to Oakland California I know I know they played the tour did you go to the show in Oakland the Cannon mm-hmm. show yeah at the Fox Theater that place mm-hmm. is so amazing we would have loved to have seen that to to be there as well yeah Jane Leo said that that was like one of their favorite uh stops on the whole tour that it was just like so amazing mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah like the intimacy the architecture inside that venue and just like the history itself of of people who've played there before and w- what did you learn touring uh you know going on tour with cannons how was it like uh traveling with them for a bit I mean, we didn't really hang out with them that much. We hung out with Jane Leo a lot um, just because, I don't know, we shared a dressing room um, and we became obsessed with them. I feel like one of the takeaways that I had was just like us dialing in, like being super fast on on, like our sound checks and needing to like be really on like how quick we're how quick we're setting up how quick we're taking down and like the stuff that isn't necessarily like the performance part of it getting to be like really dialed on that was was really cool and I feel like we're much faster now than we were before (laughs) yeah and there's just like a whole machine to it um and it was just interesting being a part of this like kind of this machine that was going and you know their crew uh, was so cool and we we hung out with their crew a lot and learned a lot from them just about like you know proper ways to do sound things or or how to you know bounce your tracks and things like that which was pretty interesting and cool um and then just this idea of I think a big thing for me on this tour was just this idea that like this is achievable for us that like this is something like within our grasp because the idea that like you know not only a tour but like such a massive tour and then to be on it and to be in it and to be like, 
okay, like I get this. I understand this now. And this is not something that is unachievable. Like this is not something that is like a way out there. It's like, this is something that like we could absolutely do. And like, I think that was really cool. And I think it was also great for us as a band, me, Harley and Kyle, the third person in our band to just like be in a van together for 12 hours a day and to be in a dressing room and to be share hotel beds and like to just be like wow we're like friends and we're close and we're not fighting or we're not bickering and like you know we're able to you know pivot and brush things off and it was just kind of cool to like I mean I I've never really been on a three-week road trip with two friends before let alone like playing shows you know so that was just kind of a cool experience yeah right oh my gosh you know you you get to tour almost like the world I bet even though it's just in the states and you uh get to know each other a lot better I'm glad that there was no bickering because you know especially when you spend so much time with an individual like okay like if you sing another Hamilton song (laughs) and I love that your you know your dreams are turning into reality and I love the story how your uh, cannons and and new constellation fans like recommended you to going on tour together just based off like a tweet so i'm wondering if you could tweet any other artist or if an artist were to tweet you to go on tour with like who, who would that be what would what would be the dream tour i mean we've been talking about this we're like okay well that worked so like should we do this again we would really love to tour with sylvanesso that's like a a, a real big one for us Um, Drama is a band we both really love and we've got to kind of know them a little bit just through like social media and then when they came to Portland we hung out with them a little bit after their show Um, and they're just an incredible band and and to tour with them would be really amazing too yeah they're like just so amazing Um, so that's another big one yeah Um, it would also be cool I think to like tour with like someone a little further outside of our genre I think would be kind of neat. Um, I don't have any examples of that, <laughs> but like, you know, I think we're yeah. as Tame and Paw, there you go. Like, I think as a band, we're pretty like amorphous. Like we can kind of do a lot of stuff and we can kind of present in a, in a lot of different ways and we can fit into a, a, a lot of different kind of scenes. Yeah. Um, whether it's like electronic or like band or like jammy or whatever. So I think it would be cool to, to play with a band or to tour with a band that's like less like us so that when we're preparing for that tour, we can sort of try new things like, Oh, we're touring with this band. That's like a little jammy. So like, let's try to jam out our set more or, you know, whatever else like to kind of just be like, let's try to, cause you know, a song is a song how it is recorded and how it sounds but that's not like the only way you're ever allowed to play it you know so it'd be cool to be put in situations where like let's play hot-blooded like a gothy country song or you know let's do look on your face but like let's have a three minute guitar solo in the middle or something like I think that'd be kind of neat I'm surprised you didn't mention um the gorillas because didn't the gorillas follow you on socials Yes, that is true. We would absolutely die to open for Gorillaz. They're like my top five favorite bands of all time. Yeah. I can imagine. So new constellations with the Gorillaz playing in that new Vegas spear. Yes. Oh my gosh. Add it to the manifestation list right now. Right now. (laughs) (laughs) So I came across... Uh, accidentally another new constellation site don't worry it's not a band i can imagine you guys doing a duel like a hamilton duel like no that's our band name but i guess it's a non-profit organization even though it it almost had culty vibes to it but i like their mission and their mission is (laughs) it said new constellation exists to help imagine and create better futures how do you feel like your music could create better futures um, I feel very attached to like our mission as a band being like encouraging people to like, you know, not give up on their dreams, like no matter how old they get, <laughs> you know, I think it's like really fun for us to be like, okay, we're not 
20 and 23 years old and like we just went on a whim and put out a song in our 30s and it killed it you know and like being really vocal about where we start and where we started and where we want to go just like really putting it in people's minds like there is no ceiling like you're the only thing that's holding you back and I think that like the more that people are doing the things that they want to do the happier they are the better they treat people the more they care about their environment you know because I feel like people are pretty shitty these days a lot because of just like scarcity and being in this like being put up against a wall and like not having not having um I don't know not 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 being happy truly because you're like so worried about what's going to happen next or not having enough money or whatever you know and so that's how I want to help yeah I think the same thing I mean if you look at a lot of our lyrics you know it's don't let your dreams die don't stop now like things like that where it's like I feel like we're we're just inherently this like sort of idea that like holy shit like we did it and it's working for us so like you should do it too you mm -hmm. know and like I think that's pretty cool we have the, the last song in our set um do what you want I think has been on tour was our absolute favorite part of every set was the last song and singing do what you want and getting the crowd to sing along and I think like if we had a mission statement as a band do what you want is probably what it would be um mm -hmm. and so I think that's just like this huge for us just like just do what you want and just like do it go do it you know it's yeah right now <laughs> turn this off go do what you want <laughs> unless what you want is to watch this interview yes please um, yeah in the whole entire one <laughs> yeah. um yeah. but yeah so same thing like I think we just we love to just encourage people to be themselves yeah I love that you practice what you preach and you are taking action and we are definitely seeing it and now that we're almost concluding this year how are you going to finish with 2023 looking forward to the new year we're going to go into major like writing and recording and not playing any shows for a minute and just like playing around together we have a handful of songs that we want to get out that we've written already and then we also just like want to write a bunch of new stuff it's been a while since we went into like major writing mode and I don't know. We hope that in in 2024 that we'll have like some new stuff out and, you know, get to make music videos around them and just like creating art with our friends and our community, you know, around the music. Yeah, yeah I love the the music video to Hot Blood. So I was definitely like, I want to see more music videos from New Constellations. Thank you. That was a hey. labor of love. <laughs> <laughs> and you know going back to space and i harley I know that you're like really into aliens so if you could introduce an alien to either a cannons or a gorilla song what would it be i mean do you want to do gorillas and i'll do cannons because i feel like I yeah mean, i mean but really like fire for you is just even like just still my favorite of all the cannon songs truly except for what's that one song <sighs> Do you know what I'm talking about? That you and I were both like, this song is so fucking good. It was in the middle of their set. Yeah, they played a couple new songs that are going to be on the new album. That one that's like, Can you, you feel my heart? It's breaking. Yeah, yeah. That one is so good. So I good. don't know what it's called, but it's you'll hear it when the album comes out, you guys. That's so yeah, good. I think it's... I know what song you're talking about. And then there was one song I really liked because it sounded very like 60s R&B soul. And mm. I've spoken to Michelle like two years ago and she was telling me how like she grew up with that music because of her parents, like, you know, original disco. So I was like, oh, oh, she's borrowing that. Mm -hmm. nice. mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if I could introduce, I guess it depends on the kind of alien. Um, <laughs> <laughs> True. But gorillas would be good because then it's like probably one that has rapping in it. So it's like you could be like, this is rap music, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> so maybe i don't know probably their first single finally someone let me out of my cage exactly that would be the one oh, del yeah. the funky homo sapien is the rapper too so to be like we're homo sapiens these are human <laughs> you know i think would also be good <laughs> i know you guys kept dropping in other interviews uh a golf prom and i was thinking 
if you were to go to prom with a gothic character, who would it be? I never uh, went to prom. Really? Okay. It's overrated. It's it's not nothing like you see in the movies. I was in like a screamo band at the time and we had like a show out of town during my prom, so I never went. But if I had a gothic character I could go to prom with. Um, oh, you know Kim Possible? Yeah. Cartoon Kim. You know like the dark the Kim Shugo? Possible? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I don't know of many goth characters off the top of my head. Here. Edward Scissorhands. Oh my gosh. I have an Edward Scissorhands purse. Hold on. I gotta I gotta show it. Oh, Casey. <laughs> that could be you, Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> I work in a news station and I always like to kind of wrap my interviews with this question, but if you could come up with a news headline, what would it be? The aliens are good. Don't listen to the government when they say there's an attack on the world coming. <laughs> if they wanted to kill us, we'd be dead already. So okay, so we're almost out of time, but I wanted to share something because I looked up your birthdays because that's how good of a social media stalker I am. I'm a Leo. You're a Leo. Oh, perfect. Because this is how a leo constellation looks like oh my gosh you're i so love cool. that it's like a it, it looks like a tent with an antenna <laughs> it's perfectly right that's perfectly exactly. right <laughs> harley's just camping in her tent and then she's got an antenna in case any aliens want to reach out to her while she's out there <laughs> yep. Yep. and then josh you're a virgo yep okay this is how your constellation looks like Yours looks like a looks like someone dancing with one leg. <laughs> <laughs> like ooh. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm an Aries. Look how boring mine is. Aww. Simple. It's not boring. <laughs> I just like to give a lot of credit to ancient peoples to see that and be like, yeah, that's something. Yeah. It's just like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Harley and Josh, thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. us. Okay, hopefully you come to the Bay Area and I'll definitely see you. Sooner than later, oh. certainly. Okay. Bye. Bye.